Today we're going to talk about Intel's famous Sandy Bridge CPU. It came out in the year 2011 and it was basically the last time that Intel gave us a major performance boost from a new architecture and ever since then they've been spoon feeding us small incremental improvements. So today we're going to see whether or not the Sandy Bridge CPU can still hold up to modern gaming. The CPU we're looking at today is the Xeon E5-1660. It came out in early 2012 for socket 2011. It features 6 cores, 12 threads, runs from 3.6 to 3.9 gigahertz, depending on how many cores are loaded. And just look at the size of it compared to a regular CPU. See, all those people running benchmark with their puny CPUs, they're just jealous about the size of your CPU socket. And with such a mighty CPU, we're finally going to have enough power to drive the mighty GeForce GTX 1070. No, not this crappy little thing. This. This is the video card we're going to be using. The motherboard is the Asus P9X79 with 32 gigs of memory running in quad channel configuration clocked at 1333 megahertz. All our games are going to be run at 1920 by 1080 resolution. First game up is Fallout 4. We're using the ultra quality preset. We're walking around downtown Boston after a nuclear apocalypse. Enjoying a little sightseeing tour, Freedom Trail, a little calming music in the background. And you can see we're getting about 50s for the frame rates. Sometimes drops below 15 to the 40s, but for the most part stays into the 50s up to 60. Very nice scenery and uh, we're getting attacked by a nasty super mutant, so let's go take care of that problem. That's better. The Witcher 3, we're using the ultra graphics quality preset with the hair works disabled and we're also using the high post processing preset. So let's get on our trusty horse and go off to the most important quest ever, testing frame rates in the center of Novigrad. This is basically the most demanding area of the game and as you can see we're getting mostly 60 frames per second. Might be a couple drops into the high 50s, but for the most part, smooth 60 frames per second all the way. GPU usage about 60%, about 30% CPU usage. So our system is basically chilling at this point, relaxing, saying this is too easy. Give me something a little more demanding. GTA 5, we're using a bunch of settings set to very high and ultra. We're going for a little joyride. Frame rate solidly in the 70s. Let's go do a little off-roading. A little drifting. So we have some some frame rate dips into the 60s. But overall, very smooth gameplay. 95-96% GPU usage. So we're putting the GTX 1070 to good use. CPU is only loaded about 20 to 30 percent so a very playable experience rise of tomb raider running in directx 12 mode and using a very high quality preset we're located in the geothermal valley basically the most demanding area of the game Going for a little stroll through the woods, enjoying some scenery, We're getting frame rate in the 70s and 80s, about 98% GPU usage, so I'm putting the GPU to good use. Good chickens running around. Oh, by the way, this game is actually called uh, Chicken Hunter. Rise of Chicken Hunter. Come here, chicken. Come here, chicken. I need you. I need some chicken. All right, chicken, your time has come. We're gonna sacrifice you to the gods. So they give us uh, 
good frame rates. Whoa, almost sacrificed myself there. And look at that, over 100 frames per second. So, uh, yeah, very, very playable. Doom 2016. We're using the ultra graphics quality preset. So we're on planet Mars for a very important mission. While it might look like we're trying to stop the demonic invasion from hell, no, we're actually on a far more important quest. We want to see if it's possible to get less than 60 frames per second on this system in this game. So far, the framework will not budge. Lock solid 60 frames per second. The CPU and the GPU both just relaxing here. So yeah, I guess I guess we've determined it's not possible, so let's safely go back to Earth. Leave the demons. Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, Ultra Graphics Quality Preset. Walking around the city of Prague, doing the touristy thing, sightseeing, enjoying the scenery. Frame rates in the 60s and 70s. That was a little hitch into the 40s there, but for the most part, it stays. 60 to 70 frames per second. GPU usage is around 99%, so we're basically fully limited by the GPU. Far Cry 5 using the Ultra Graphics Quality preset. Decided to do a little outdoor adventure, zip lining, walking around, enjoying the scenery, sunshine, and we're getting very good performance frame rate in the 80s, 90s, sometimes even up to 100. GPU usage is in the 80s and 90s as well. CPU usage is about 30s and 40s, so very smooth gameplay, no problem whatsoever. But just for fun, let's overclock the processor and see what happens. This is an unlock CPU, very easy to overclock. We raise the turbo frequencies to run from 4.3 to 4.7 gigahertz. And I also raise the memory frequency to 1600 megahertz. And this time in Fallout 4, we're getting mostly 50s and 60 frames per second. So it does not drop below 50 like it did with the stock CPU frequencies. So that's definitely a, a nice, nice noticeable improvement. back in Prague for Deus Ex Mankind Divided. We're on a quest to see how low we can make the frame rates go. So far we're getting 60s and 70s, some drops into the 50s. Let's see how low it drops in this part here. So about 53 frames per second, that's the lowest it went. So also an improvement compared to the stock settings. So what kind of conclusion can we make from the video? Well, pretty much what everyone already expected. If you're running a Sandy Bridge CPU, if you got a quad core CPU, maybe you can think about upgrading to something with more cores, but if you got a six core CPU, you can safely forget about upgrading until the next three or four years. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.